So friends, I was, um, I was uh, with a group of men the other day in a sort of a Bible study, but we weren't doing Bible. We were talking about different topics. And these men, we came to, um, to a moment in the, in the little kind of gathering, get together, where they said, you know, I, I have a difficulty. I have a challenge when people tell me what to do or when I get prescriptions or laws or, and it doesn't happen only to men. I, I just happen to be with men, but it happens men or women where in our time, and I get it, I get it, in the past, maybe there was an abuse of, of, of power. You know, when somebody comes and says, well, because I say so, or because I'm the boss. And there's, we in our generation have a little bit of a rejection to the way that it was, you know, that was done in the past. Now it's all, you have to tiptoe around everybody because it's, you know, it's just, uh, we are a bunch of wimps in the world. We, we just have to, you can't take, like, instructions because you got to respect everybody's individuality. And, and again, I get it, I get it. It's, we like things to be, we would like to be persuaded but not obliged. But today in which we're celebrating this beautiful feast day, I'd like to propose to you, so... Before I say this, we don't like the word obedience. I have a vow, Father Donald, Father, uh, all of the padres, the religious, we have a vow of obedience, but we don't like that word. It's like, you do you, and everybody does their own thing. Well, I'd like to propose to you an obedience not that enslaves, but one that frees us, and we want to be free. We were made for freedom. We were made for happiness, but we were made for freedom, and that's why I want to propose to you. So, you know, when a person wants to, let's say that any of us would like to learn French. Suppose that none of us know French, but we want to learn a new language. Well, in order to learn the language, the art of speaking French, well, we submit ourselves to the grammar rules, the rules of grammar of the French language. If we, as we're learning, if we're sitting with two or three francophones, they are freer than I am because they can express themselves freely according to the laws of the French language. And we would kind of be enslaved in the ignorance of not knowing French, so we wouldn't speak so well, and it would take about a year to maybe be fluent. And so the freer one is the one that follows the rules more because actually we are made for the rules but we just reject them in our culture. Or if you think about another, any other art or sport, if we want to, if we've never played tennis and we want to play tennis, we submit ourselves to the coach. And what is the coach going to do? He's going to say, well, this is the way you grab the racket. And when you're going to hit a backhand, you go like this. And it would be dumb for us if we'd say, well, who are you to tell me how to play tennis? I'm going to play tennis and grab a baseball bat and start hitting it. Well, there's something odd. You're just rebelling against your own self. Don't you say, didn't you say you want to play tennis? Well, so it goes with the spiritual life, my friends. It's exactly the same thing. It's interesting because in the Old Testament, for our older brothers in the faith, the Jews, there's so many psalms, and even our Lord says, there are so many psalms that say, Lord, your law is my delight. And the Lord says, the Father loves me because I always do what he asks of me. And that's an obedience that frees us. It's an obedience that shows us the way. And I don't know if you noticed, but I took the long reading. There's two options for today. There's the short version, the long version. I thought, I'm not going to be stingy because you guys are going to throw tomatoes at me. Let's do the long version. And three times it's saying that the three most important people, the most educated people, the most tender and smart people in the history of mankind, the Son of God, His mother, and the one chosen to be the Father on earth, they submit themselves to going to the temple and doing what the law says. They would have had all the excuses not to obey. I mean, if there was somebody who who could say, well, I'm the law itself. Well, Jesus couldn't speak, but he could have been born an 18-year-old. But no, he decided to be tiny and small and limited. And in a certain sense, 
He sub no, not in a certain sense. For truly, by being born this size and being totally dependent, he was submitting himself to the law. Now you ask yourself the question, do you submit yourself to the different laws that there are? And I'm talking big laws. I'm not talking about not crossing. I mean, even those, those are important, right? Not, you know, going through a red light and those things. But I mean, the law, for example, of the church. The law of the good advice and education formation that we got from our grandparents, our parents. The law of a well-formed conscience, because we don't all, not every conscience is a right conscience, right? Not everybody is capable of, of telling the difference between right and wrong, and we're all obliged, motivated, shown by the sacred family to form our consciences to be able to say this is right and this is wrong. Then also, in the life of the church, sometimes there will be some teachings that will be a little bit more challenging than others. You know, in the, in the last week, we've had one of the most challenging documents that has been written since Humanae Vitae. I'm not going to get into it, but how do we, how much do we, if, if Jesus, Joseph, and Mary trusted that obeying the laws of the moment, the church of the moment, because the Catholic church had not been born yet, right? We had to wait for Jesus to found it. 30-something years. But do we trust in the freedom and the peace that our hearts achieve by obeying the different types of laws? And I think we should. I think we should. We look at Joseph. Joseph is probably, after Jesus and Mary, the most holy person that has ever existed. Or at least so, has, that has been the opinion of many early fathers of the church who would uh, expound on our faith. The, a, a recent founder, Saint Jose Maria Escrivá, the founder of Opus Dei, he says, Joseph is well, without a doubt the holiest person that has, has ever lived. Wow, but he didn't even pronounce a word. He, we know very little of him. Well, because I would say that Joseph is the man who listens to the word and silently obeys it, follows it. He's the one who listens to the words in his dreams and quietly goes about his job. And it wasn't an easy one because traveling with a pregnant woman who's about to give birth in those times is not the same as today you have to multiply the dangers by about a thousand so i think it would be very good as we first of all we prepare to end the year and i recommend everybody that tomorrow would be a day of gratitude even if you have to work and that's fine we can live with the sense of gratitude for the end of the year and with all the motivation and the hope and the faith and the love for a new year that will start but that we continue our mass, our mass just having this question in our hearts have i discovered that obedience is freeing and not enslaving and how do i apply that how do i live that do i really believe that by obeying the different instances in my life, the different people in my life, in the second reading we heard how a man and a woman in a marriage must obey each other, the demands of each other, the, the rightful ones, right? Not the, not the stubborn little things that, that, that one might demand of the other, the, 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 the correct, the, the demands of love, the demands even the obedience to the, from the children to their parents, but also the parents to the needs of their children and being able to cater to them. So let's ask our mother Mary, who we, we're going to celebrate in, in, on Monday, right? It's uh, one of the solemnities. Let's ask her to teach us, Mother, you who obeyed the law like nobody else, allow me to discover the truth that obedience is freeing and obedience is peace. Amen.